Thank you so much um, for calling in. We're not going to share your name here, but a an expert. Uh, can you can you explain to me what what we're looking at here and and what your yes. sort of expertise is? Yeah, so my credentials, by the way, um, I'm an MD. I'm specifically a pathologist and um, been practicing for many years now. And what pathologists are is we're the, we're the doctors who actually receive the specimens and diagnose cancers um, in patients. And a lot of, just, um, just as a, a little background, a lot of patients don't know about us, um, but anyone who's dealt with cancer knows about a pathology report. So I'm someone who would write that report. So you essentially are looking at the raw data to see blood levels and things like that, that might lead to someone being, uh, have cancer. Yes. So pathologists are sort of doing all the behind the scenes, um, lab work. But what happens is, um, if a piece of tissue is taken out of a person, um, for example, even the, the, um, the contents that, um, Jane Doe purports to have passed, um, often those, those tissues will get examined under a microscope to confirm what they are. So um, that can include, you know, blood. We do look at blood. We look at all those things. But um, yeah, so cancer is essentially our, our bread and butter with this stuff. And, and so all we have here are... Um these health documents. So based on what you're seeing here, what signs do you see that this isn't, um, or, or, or tell me, do, are there any signs that she's telling the truth based on what you've seen? So I will say that if someone does have an elevated CA 125, um, which is something she has a document for, that is a marker for possible um, malignancies, but it's also a marker for other things as well. It's not definitive for cancer. Um, however, if a patient had that elevated number that she has then, or, you know, purportedly has, um, it would make sense for imaging to then be done for the patient. And then imaging would look at, you know, the ovaries potentially see a mass or a tumor, but there would be no way to confirm it was cancer just from the imaging unless it had spread. So, so you, you, had, surgery, you're saying it would have to be through surgery to know what, how, how, how much cancer there is and where it is. Yes. Especially for a one, a stage for ovary because one, a by definition, and sometimes Roman numerals are used by the way. Um, so I, you know, theoretically I, a could be, could yeah, be that's what problem. I thought when I Googled it, I said, well, this isn't really proof. I think I was the one mispronouncing it because I'm an idiot, but yeah. Actually, you you pronounced O for me pretty well. Oh, thank. So very oh, bizarre oh, appreciate work. it. I got you know a broken <laughs> clock is right twice a day. So yeah. Um, so yeah. So for stage one A, what that means is that the the tumor is completely confined to the ovary. So um, for ovarian cancer specifically, it would be impossible to determine um, until the ovary is out and that whole specimen, that whole ovary, is sent to the pathology lab. They look at it and they see what kind of tumor it is. And then, um, and then it is staged. So if, if these documents are claiming that they knew she had cancer before any surgery, that is just not possible. And, and um, even if you thought it might be cancer, you would never, you just would never put this in this sort of email format that they have here. No, that's, that's a separate thing. Look, can I promise, I, are there concierge doctors out there? Um, who cater to, you know, especially emailing patients and, and things like that. Sure. But this, this physician, um, is a physic highly specialized physician at Sutter health, which is a San Francisco, um, you know, hospital. And there's no way they would be communicating, um, via email. They would keep it all on the portal. Very sus suspect that, um, they would be talking about her boyfriend as much. Yeah. And no, I, like, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, as far as opinions go, it seems as though they are offering opinions. Like we think that, you know, you, you should ask your boyfriend to support you're doing recovery, not to mention the typos there, but it does seem that that would be beyond their scope. Yes. A couple other unusual things here. I want to say that, that if I was a physician hearing this story, which I guess I am, uh, kind of raise the red flag is that um, ovarian cancer is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly rare in someone of her age. Not impossible, 
but very rare. Right, because this would have been this would have been um seven. This would have been when she was late, mid to late twenties. Yeah, it's generally found in women over fifty. Um, it's very rare in in women and and um, you know just normally fertile women, and it's also rare to catch ovarian cancer at such an early stage in anybody. I mean, you've already heard from some of your listeners that they know people who've had stage four, et cetera. Honestly, you're lucky if you can catch ovarian cancer at stage two or three, it's almost never caught in stage one. Um, Have you ever, when it is, it's incidental, which means the ovary was taken out for some other reason. And then they happen to catch it when the, that ovary is being examined. Right. I mean, have you ever had in your in your time as a pathology uh, expert here, have you ever had somebody fake medical documents to say they have cancer? Um, you know, I personally don't have experience with it, but obviously have heard of this. Um, I would say for the most part, people don't people who fake cancers often um, don't go this far to try to fake it. And they also will choose a cancer that's a lot more likely. Um, oh, good old skin, the old skin cancer fake. You know, it's it, you, just in my anecdotal evidence, I think um, younger people will choose maybe like lymphomas or things like that. I'm not totally sure why she chose ovarian. I, I don't have any personal experience with, um, I, I hope none of my path reports have been doctored. Um, it's, it's possible. Oh, and another thing I do want to say, I want to confirm what that other doctor who was not me emailed you <laughs> yes. earlier. Um, very, uh, very surprising that, that a doctor would do, a, uh, um, an abortion and a cancer ovary removal in the same, uh, procedure that just wouldn't happen. Well, look, They're I mean, Jane Doe's a busy person. If it's a two for one deal, maybe she had a group on, you never know. Right. It's it's very odd. Um, it's also weird that in that email, she's talking more about the boyfriend than the um, ovarian follow up. I mean, there's just a lot that's really weird here. So um, the latest document we have, uh, which might be one of the only certified documents was from November 14th, 2023. Mom doc women for women. And I, have you seen this document? Is this the CAT scan? Um, I, I, I don't, oh yes. What, uh, sorry. It's called a CAT scan. Oh, well, no, I, I, um, I don't know if I've seen this. All right. So talk. it shows her gyneco gynecological history and it's pretty, um, the, I've, I've got it pulled up right now, but, um, this is the document where someone had mentioned adnexa and how that has to deal with ovaries. It says adnexa without tenderness, mass thickening, fixation, or other abnormality. Um, that means yes. ovaries are fine. Yes. So, um, adnexa is, is just, yeah, the technical term for, um, ovaries and fallopian tubes. And um, I'll also say it's very weird that if the patient, if any patient has a history of cancer of any kind or an organ removal, it's very weird that that wouldn't be reported in medical documents. But so yeah, and next day does refer to the ovaries and fallopian tubes. And um, it, it sounds like there was no abnormality there. Now, if there was a missing ovary, that would be noted. And um, yeah, absolutely. And that would be noted. Exam. That would be noted in the adnexa section. Would it say like um, no left ovary? Like what would that say? Yeah, it would say um, absence of you know left ovary, um, something like that. Um, you know, or no no ovary noted on the left, or you know. Yeah, just well, I, I have to say you've come off extremely credible. And of course, I know I know who you are through other other social media things. So I have no belief that you're pranking us here. I mean, you're extremely knowledgeable here, but we're not going to give you, you give your identity away due to the scornful nature. What sort of I mean, what sort of consequences do they do they even teach you the sinister side of medicine about medicine being um, manipulated uh, or is this something that yeah, you know, like, 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 who would 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 the would the state have to file charges against her for medical fraud if this were the case? Like, what what do you, or or would it be the the this private prac this practice here um, at um, the, at this medical firm? 
Yeah, so this is really bizarre. I'm going to be honest with you. We're, we're not really taught um, in med school about what to do with things taken to this degree. And to be honest, if I, I'm willing to bet that, you know, most, most doctors want to avoid litigation in general. And so if we had found out that someone was modifying our reports, I think probably what would happen is um, – the clinic would try to reach out through their lawyers and maybe threaten the patient make and something like that. However, I'm not totally sure. I mean, absolutely litigation can be taken against the patient and probably should, but I, I don't think that would be the very first thing they would attempt. Yeah. Um, I feel like with pretty aggressive. Yeah. I feel like so, with Fiverr got back to Megan Fox very quickly. Uh, of course they don't want their app to be used for fraud. I'm sure, I'm sure most doctors, I mean, th there's also fraud, um, you know, uh, with, with this, uh, law firm that apparently is friends with their family. So you can understand right. if it's a family friend, they might want to brush it under the rug. Um, but as far as this pep, uh, I guess this exam from November was just for a pap smear. Uh, so mm -hmm. could it be that she's self, uh, you know, when they say, you know, they, they wouldn't check her ovaries, right. If she's getting a pap smear. So there is, um, a way to check for the ovaries internally. It's called um, a bimanual exam, or there are other things where essentially um, skilled OB guys can um, they can actually feel for it. We're essentially a uh, little bit of trigger warning for um, you know uh, explicitness here. But the fingers can be inserted, and then they can palpate within the vagina as well as use their other hand above the abdomen, and they can actually feel the and next day that way and they can identify because you know some women actually have an ovary that um is sort of like under their uterus or tucked in a weird place they can actually feel that a lot of the time um so they actually kind of feel for that well you know i'm an idiot and i don't I, as far as I know, have ovaries. So this is all news to me, <laughs> but is there anything else you want to share? I truly appreciate you reaching out. I, I, this is wildly above my pay grade. So it's nice to hear from somebody who knows how to sort of discuss this, uh, you know, medically, you know, you know, professionally speaking. Yes, of course. Okay. So, um, a couple other things, I think you had posted, um, an email where the doctor supposedly said that, um, if she has a retro inverted uterus, that will make it incredibly difficult to do, um, procedures. And that's not true. Retro inverted uterus is are actually very common. Um, I, you know, some major percentage, it's, it's basically just the way that um, uteruses can be tilted. They can be tilted forward a bit, back a bit, or in a neutral position. And, um, you know, surgeons generally don't have trouble with, with navigating that. Um, yeah, she said, another, she said she uh, said you ahead. have a severely tipped or ret retroverted uterus, which makes the aspiration in D&E procedures more difficult and less likely to be successful. So what you're saying is that's pretty much not true. Right. I mean, I think for for sure, for very skilled, experienced surgeons, they're used to that. Um, that I want to say at least a quarter of the population, um, if not higher, has, you know, tilted uteruses. So, um you know, it may be more difficult for some doctors, maybe, but I it's something that gets navigated. And then also, um, you know, looking at the pictures of the contents that Jane Doe had had a few documents back, I just want to reiterate that um, if those are real. That just looks very nonspecific. That doesn't look anything like, you know, this is definitely... Um, uh, a miscarriage or anything like that. So I'm just reiterating what others have said. Yeah. I mean, were you surprised to hear an expert testimony that she was most likely 99% pregnant based on this information? Yes, I was. And, um, since, especially since I'm anonymous here, I don't mind saying that, uh, that doctor, um, the doctor seems a little shady because it is very disingenuous to say, um, you know, 99% of uh, positive HCG tests are pregnancy. And then there's, you know, um, a small portion that are cancers. It, you, physicians always consider exogenous 
injections of things. We always consider that. That's not just for HCG. It's also for, you know, we've seen it for other things too. Sometimes patients with a thyroid problem will find that they were injecting something. And you know, um, I mean, when when we when we got our pregnancy test, um, we didn't we didn't celebrate. We were like, there's no way we're pregnant, you know, cause it was early on. And my, and my wife has been on different medications and we we're like, well, maybe something mm -hmm. must've tripped it. And then the people, and then the people were like, well, it's, it, it could happen, but it was pretty rare that it would be anything but pregnancy at this point, because, you know, she tested very, you know, the, the test was like very quickly, a very solid pregnancy test. And then the mm -hmm. second and third one, but of course, what did we do? We got our first appointment the next day to go, to go get an ultrasound, you know, yes. like, Yes. Um, a pregnancy can't be really confirmed, confirmed until it's seen on ultrasound in the uterus, because also, you know, it's customary to make sure that there's not an ectopic pregnancy or something like that. And HCG is simply a molecule. It's just a chemical that is tested by a test. And it's sort of like a surrogate marker um, for pregnancy. It, it doesn't it's not proof of pregnancy by any means. And also, you know, I think others have probably discussed this already, but anyone who's gone through fertility treatments and IVF know that injectable HCG is the most commonly used trigger shot um, in the very last step of IVF. And so there are vials of liquid HCG around. Um, you know, it's not hard to get. It's not um, a controlled substance. She theoretically could have someone, a family friend, prescribe her that. I mean, who knows? You can buy it on <laughs> Reddit from people. Or a veterinary so, store, correct? I mean, it would be the same molecule yes. used for fertility with horses. Not 100% sure if it's the same with horses or not. But yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, that's conceivable. They're not, they're not teaching you horse fertility treatments in med school <laughs> anymore. Come on, the, the school system these days. <laughs> um, I had one more thought I wanted to ask you and I really appreciate your time. Please don't bill, mm -hmm. please don't bill me for this. I know you're expensive. No. Um, but boy, I do know who, who to call with more questions cause you're fantastic. Um, but, uh, one of the logistical points that her attorney was making is, well, what, 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 uh, uh, Clayton's experts are saying is, and again, I don't, I don't agree with this, but, uh, her, her lawyers, uh, saying, well, if they can't confirm pregnancy, without an ultrasound, what if somebody never goes to the doctor? Would they ever confirm a pregnancy if someone actually delivers a baby? It was just like, the, I don't know if you saw that kind of point, that logistical point they were trying to make that how do you, how do you, how do you define what a confirmed pregnancy is? But it seems, it seems like there's the, uh, a sort of a medical uh, uh, boundary here where it, it's an indicator if it's, you know, uh, like a, an over the counter ACG test, but it's not, mm -hmm. it's not proven until, I mean, ultrasound or the baby comes out of the womb, really. I mean, you know, I, what, I mean, yeah. right. Yeah. There's absolutely no way to, there, it's, it's not a, um, it's not a confirmed pregnancy unless, um, I, I would say maybe three things. One, the ultrasound confirming the gestational sac, um, Two, the baby is born, or three, if there is a miscarriage or um, uh, abortion or something, and then that specimen is examined mm. under the microscope, and um, we can actually see the reason for that is that, um, and this is actually a very common thing for pathologists. We learn in residency; it's it's a, it's you know one of the first things we learn is it's called products of conception. We get sent it, we look at it under the microscope, and we have to confirm that essentially we see early fetal um, organs. And that's those three ways are the only ways to confirm, like without any doubt, that there's a pregnancy. I mean, I'm I, I think that most people assume that, you know, someone with positive pregnancy test is telling the truth, but yeah. I think that's it's what that's what is so sinister about people who fake pregnancies or fake mm -hmm. cancer is that they're taking advantage of such a sensitive time. I mean, the joys that I have been witness to from pregnancy 
have been amazing. When my wife goes to the supermarket, it's like a parade. Uh, women are coming up to her. <laughs> men are high-fiving me. I mean, it, it really is like a real fun time. Uh, and to take advantage yeah. <laughs> of the struggles that people have, whether it being because they lost children. Of course, the, the, the person who was behind the vanishing ultrasound is now heartbroken once again, eight years later, finding out their ultrasound was stolen. So it, um, right. it, it does take a special type of person to, to want to, um, you know, hide behind these sensitive subjects. Yeah, it's, it's very upsetting. Um, absolutely for hundreds, if not thousands of, of people who've gone through that themselves. And, oh, another thing I'll say, um, sorry if I'm taking too long, but not at all. The whole, the whole vanishing twin syndrome thing is truly funny because, I've discussed this case with some of my colleagues um, months ago, and actually one of them made a joke. Oh, the twins are gone. You know, I wonder if they're going to try to claim it's vanishing twin syndrome because just the name itself was probably appealing to her defense that it's, oh, look, twins can vanish. And um, but it's, it's just it's actually a very specific uh, thing that only happens early in pregnancies, that essentially one of the twins in a gestation in a in a pregnancy will have fewer resources and nutrition going to it and um the other one kind of has more and the twin with less resources will eventually absorb and that will um also nourish the remaining twin but i hardly see how that explains the situation because first of all that happens very early in pregnancy you often don't even know what happens. I mean, it's honestly rare to even catch it happening. And B, you still have another fetus that's growing. So I don't even know how that really applies to this case where she claimed she had two and she never said she lost one and not the other. Um, so, yeah. And then of course, now that story's changed, um, with, with, uh, okay. with it, well, with the knowledge, I don't know if you saw yesterday, we found the ultrasound that, um, she claims was 21 weeks, which of course we now believe comes from her sister who had a baby in, right. in uh, June of 2023. So the stories keep changing, but the comment section is very appreciative of your, uh, expertise here. Thanks again. You got my number, text me, call me yeah. anytime. Uh, whether to be on air or just give it, give your two cents. We really appreciate you helping us out here. Okay, great. No, thank you for having me on. All right. Have a good one.